all of them, and I think you saw with uh, Force 11 and you see it with the RDA, is they all require that within the data citation there are persistent identifiers, unique obviously. Um, and the, one of the obvious ones is the digital object identifier. Now, persistent identifiers have been around for a long time. You think of ISBNs, you know what ISBNs are? They're for books. A unique identification, ISSN, a unique identification number for a serial title. So that sort of thinking has been around for a great deal longer than DOIs, which is, in a sense, a, a relatively new um, introduction. DOIs are character string, um, and they are used to uniquely identify an object, and then the metadata about the object is stored in association with the DOI name. Now, libraries have been using DOIs for a long time, but it's now becoming the de facto standard for data and data publishing. So this is good, the two communities are actually coming together and using the same sorts of standards. And below you can see that there is a, um, a DOI here, and I've broken it down, it's actually a DOI that the uh, MBL HUI used, um, and you can see how it is, it's a DOI registry, it's a 10, 1575 is the um, registry agent, and this uh, time it's Crossref. The publisher is MBL Hui, and then 5105 is the item number. So you can actually, just as you can with an ISBN, and define who the publisher is, or the year. You know, the different components actually do give you some information. It's not an arbitrary, arbitrary uh, number that is just allocated. On the side here, I've put some of the agents, DOI agents. They're around the world. You'll find them in Japan, in Germany, in the States. I know that, um, oh, you can't see the data site URL, but it is there. Um, I know that uh, Woods Hole use Crossref, but um, the really big one is data site, and if you want to find out all the agencies, the DOI agencies, look on the data site um, website and it will give you those. And I was talking to Jen earlier because um, the bad news perhaps is, if we have to say that, is that DOIs cost. And there are various subscription plans. Uh, Jen was telling about one where they pay. Do you mind if I repeat? Uh, Woods Hole pays, uh, or MBL Woods Hole pays 200 a year and then they get their DOIs cheaper and the more DOIs they have, the cheaper it gets. So there are plans that you could actually discuss with DataCite. But DOIs, of course, are used for all sorts of objects. I mean, publications for data sets, images. You can get a DOI in a sense, D -O -I, in a sense for any object, digital object whatsoever. There are other IDs. Um, persistent identifiers, but this one is all about uh, researcher IDs. And I just wanted to quickly mention this because, of course, it's very useful. You can uh, link researchers' um, outputs, different outputs, different media types, by using their ORCID and ORC ID, um, particularly since, as we all know, all authors don't use their same. You know, you will have Robert Keeley, and you will have Bob Keeley. Um, you will have R.M. Keeley. So how do we know, in fact, that that's the same man? And this is what this enables. It's assigned to individuals. It's a 16-digit. Um, this is mine here. OK, so anything that I actually produce, I would add that to it. And those are being picked up by the indexing agencies. And so we can gather together uh, an individual's um, outputs under one thing, whatever format of name they have used, in fact. There are 40 partners, over 40 partners, and a lot of publishing uh, companies are actually integrating with ORCID. Uh, you can see names there, and NIH is actually tracking researchers' progress using ORCID. So it is worth you actually advocating to your researchers. It's free, so it's worth you advocating to your researchers to actually get an author name ID from ORCID. Sorry, Jane.
Yep. Thanks. Um, other name IDs, researcher ID, that's from Thompson, that integrates with Web of Knowledge. It's ORCID compliant, and this is the wonderful thing, that these now are not standalone, they're starting to be interoperable, compliant with each other, so, you know, researcher ID can map to ORCID. Uh, ISN, ISNI, sorry, um, again, is a, a name ID. Uh, strangely, is is not so prevalent, but again, it's interoperable with ORCID. So it's really worth you advocating to your researchers and to yourselves to get yourself a, um, an ORCID ID. Yeah. 